President. Mr. President, I have the Mr. Second. President, I have the floor. I, I, you have been removed from the chair. As a vote of 32, Senator George Winner will now take Lemis. the chair. Tonight, hostile takeover. In a dramatic bid to seize the Senate majority, Republicans carry out a coup. This evening, the tension-filled moments that have both parties claiming control of the New York State Senate and has the Capitol once again in a state of chaos. A breaking news edition of Capitol Tonight starts right now. Good evening. Welcome on this extraordinary, historic, and extraordinarily hectic Monday night. I'm Brian Taff. It was clearly well planned, and yet it caught the Capitol by complete surprise. Senate Republicans today staging a coup that has turned state government on its head, and has everyone confused as to exactly who is in control there. Shortly after 4 o'clock this afternoon, joined by two so-called dissident Democrats, Republicans set into motion a series of events that began with a vote to oust Majority Leader Malcolm Smith. It ended with Smith's fellow Democrats leaving the Senate chamber and shutting off the lights. As we speak tonight, Smith says he is still in charge, even as Republican leader Dean Skelos has sworn the oath, reclaiming the Majority Leader title he lost mere months ago. Over the course of the next hour plus tonight, we'll be talking to some of the central figures in this epic power play. Among our guests, Senator Pedro Espada, who crossed party lines to vote with Republicans today and is now claiming the title of Senate President. Also, Republican Senator Tom Libis, who led the charge today, carrying out that plan on the Senate floor. Well, as we said, this process might have caught everyone by surprise, but it was clearly planned to a T. Republican Senator Tom Libis executing the strategy on the Senate floor. It was dramatic, and we're going to bring you those events as they unfolded a bit later here. But uh, first, we are joined live now by Senator Libis himself. He called for the vote to oust Smith today. He resisted Democratic efforts to quash it. And tonight, he says he is back in the majority party. Senator Libis, uh, appreciate your time, sir. Thanks for joining us. So let's begin with the facts first, uh, the legality of all of this. Senator Smith, uh, as we've already heard tonight and as we will hear again, claims he is still the majority leader in the Senate. He says this wasn't legal, you didn't have a quorum. Uh, how will you respond to that statement tonight? Well, a actually, we did have a quorum. I called for a quorum call. We actually had uh, 34 members uh, in the House when we did this. Uh, the other thing, Brian, is that uh, the motion to uh, elect the new leaders was still on the floor. Uh, what took place was uh, we, we overruled uh, the chair and we had it by 32 votes. When it went back to the original motion, I still had the floor. I was still standing. The floor was mine. They then walked off and said that they adjourned. At that moment, uh, I said that uh, we need to have an immediate vote on adjournment because we had 32 votes that would have voted not to adjourn. They walked off the floor. Uh, so there are a couple of procedures that they really uh, uh, made a mistake on. And number one, uh, we, I still, there was a motion on the floor, and Mason's rules will tell you that when there is a motion on the floor, you cannot adjourn. All of this, uh, of course, a lot of uh, technical and parliamentary procedure uh, that might be unfamiliar to much of our audience. But regardless, the bottom line is you began all of this today uh, by calling for that vote uh, to change Senate leadership. When it was challenged, then you challenged uh, the ruling on the floor, meaning that you wanted that vote to take place. Senator, it was clear to me in watching this unfold live today that this was planned uh, to a T. You knew going in there what you were going to say. You anticipated the Democratic response. How long had this been in the works for it? Well, Brian, this was historic reform. Uh, this is about the people of New York State, not, not about the politicians. Uh, there's been frustration uh, for several months by not only the Democrats that joined us today, and I believe other Democrats will join the coalition, but, you know, uh, Senator Smith in, in his uh, majority uh, talked about reforming when they ran last November. Uh, they didn't reform. They had public hearings. They had a number of meetings across the state. They said that they would reform in April. They pushed it back to May. And most recently, they said they would do reforms later on this year. 
quite frankly, uh, the Republican Party uh, caucus was not happy with that, and many of the Democrats are not happy. And this is when uh, Senator Espada, Senator Montserrat, um, we have had discussions uh, for a number of weeks, uh, and most recently, over the course of the last uh, three or four days, it got very serious because session is ending in two weeks. And we agreed that we needed to do major reform. As you pointed out, Senator, the uh, session is ending in two weeks. There are several key issues uh, as yet unresolved. And uh, one of those people in the previous piece just said this amounts to a little more than a distraction, something that will make it difficult to get anything else done uh, this session. Uh, would you agree with that statement? Are you going to have to prolong the session? Well, you know, uh, if you look at the reforms we passed today uh, that are going to make things better for the people of this state, uh, we're really going to open up government. We're doing things that uh, have been talked about for years but never been done. Uh, the calendar says this session ends uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, quite frankly, Brian, uh, I'm an elected official, uh, uh, you know, 12 months out of the year. Uh, I'm here to do what's important for the people I represent. I believe all the members of the Senate feel that way. Um, and, and we'll stay and do whatever we have to and get done the business of the state. Uh, you know, we're, we're not happy. Uh, you, as, as you look at what happened in the budget this year, uh, $8 billion in new taxes, $13 billion in spending, uh, we need to change the direction of this state. That's what, what this coalition intends on doing. You know, there are a lot of skeptics out there, as is always the case, and I'm going to challenge uh, some of our other guests on this topic later on. But, but what about this notion that's been thrown around so much this session, the word hypocrisy, and that Senate Republicans had power for so long? Uh, Dean Skelos, a majority leader tonight, previously so, uh, said earlier this week that he recognized when Republicans were in charge, they didn't conduct themselves perhaps uh, in the best manner with respect to treatment of the minority party, the Democrats, and now you find yourself in the minority, you don't like the way you've been treated, and you wrestle back control. Is that, um, what about that hypocrisy well, sentiment? You, you know, Brian, it's more about the people of the state, and, and I think that's what we really have to focus on. It's more about how this new majority has governed. I mean, they, they told us that they would do reforms. They didn't. They raised taxes, $13 billion. I mean, $8 billion. They raised spending at record levels. Uh, you talk to the people who live in, in, in the homes uh, from Long Island uh, to upstate New York, they want change. They want less taxes. That's how you create jobs. They want uh, less spending. Uh, they're not happy what happened in, in this budget. And quite frankly, you can say hypocrisy, whatever you want. We are going to change, and the proof will be in the pudding as the days ahead, but we started that change today as we put the reforms on the floor. So, you know, we could debate the past. It's all about the future. The people of this state want to know where they're going to get their jobs from, how their families are, are, are going to make a living, um, you know, how we're going to continue to provide education for their kids. And we're going to do that in a coalition government, and we're going to do that moving forward, and we're going to give all the senators a say. You know, there will be Democrat senators who uh, walked out of the chamber today that will be committee chairs. Uh, that's historic. That's never been done before. So, you know, the past is the past. I think the proof of the pudding is uh, your commitment to the future. We began that commitment today, uh, and we're going to change this state. And I'll say it again. I'll say it a hundred times. Uh, this is about the people of New York, not about the politicians. What about such things as just the logistics? When uh, Democrats won the majority last year, it took a long time for them to implement it. There's changing offices. There's hiring and firing staff. There's tens, if not hundreds, of millions of dollars involved with a change in leadership. How do you see this playing out uh, in the coming weeks and months? Well, Brian, as you may or may not know, uh, Senator Skelos appointed me as the head of the transition team uh, for the minority when things happened back uh, in, in December. Uh, I have spent hours with my staff uh, combing over uh, the different functions of the Senate. I have a very good handle on, on how we can move forward. It's going to take time. We're going to ask the, the public to be patient. Um, we will deal with issues over the course of the coming weeks and as we move ahead. As far as the transition is concerned, you know what, uh, I'm not concerned. I don't think uh, Senator Espada and I don't think uh, Senator Skelos is worried about uh, the size of somebody's office right now uh, or those kind of logistic things. We'll work those out over time. What's most important is, is legislation that affects the lives of every New Yorker. That's what we're going to address first. 
Uh, finally, I suppose I'd ask you how you classify yourself tonight. Uh, you are a Republican. Uh, you were in the minority. Now there is a Democratic Senate president and a Republican majority leader. Are you senator or a member of the majority, or are you a part of a bipartisan coalition? Uh, I, I see myself as an elected official for the people. Uh, I'm elected in the southern tier of New York. Uh, I represent uh, Broome, Tioga, and Shenango counties. Uh, I will work with the coalition. I will work with the Democrats to do what's best in the best interest of the people I represent. So I will be uh, a part of, of all three facets of government if it means changing the way the state does business, if it means lowering taxes, reducing spending, and doing what's right for my constituents. Now, Senator Tom Libis, a central figure in those dramatic moments on the Senate floor today. Senator, appreciate your time, sir. Uh, thanks for it. We'll be talking to you very soon, I'm sure.